Hi, I'm Andy Morris and welcome to Art with Andy. Today we're going to be doing an abstract landscape painting and we're going to use some collage element in it. I have my papers here, some rice papers, some old failed paintings that I just tear up and use now as collage elements, magazine pages. I probably have some uh, construction paper, I use this sometimes. Newspaper. So just a variety of papers. Whatever you want to use is fine. There's some colored tissue paper here. Just start collecting papers. You're going to want to do collage work. It's a lot of fun and it really develops your skills as an artist. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got some gloss medium thinned out just a little bit. I used about 10 parts gloss medium to one part water. Okay, so not very much water. If you use too much water, then the integrity of the uh, gloss medium is compromised. It won't adhere uh, nearly as well. So I, I use foam brushes quite a bit. They're inexpensive. If I forget to clean them, I can just throw them away and I haven't lost a fortune. I've got some paints laid out here. We won't need those right away. I'll just take the object, the objective of what we're doing at this point is to break up this white canvas. Now this is a pretty large canvas. It's 40 by 60. I stretched it myself. I stretch most of my painting, my, my canvases myself. Uh, it makes it a lot cheaper. I'll show you how to do that in future videos. If you went to an art store and purchased this, it would be at least $100. That would be the cheapest one, and it would probably be more like $200, maybe even more. But if you do it yourself, you can get the price down to about $35, and I'll show you how to do that in another video. So, like I said, we're just breaking up the space. We know that this is going to be a landscape, even though it's not going to be literal. It's not going to represent any particular place that we've been, and we're not working from a photograph. We're just working from ideas in our head. We've all seen canyons and mountains and, you know, so we're, we all have a good idea of what landscapes look like. And initially, all we want to do is just randomly break up this space. So it doesn't matter where we st stick anything. We're just going to put quite a bit of glue. Well, I called it glue. <laughs> uh, gloss medium. We're using it as glue. On the back side of our paper and then I'll just come over here and do it like that. Now some of these heavier papers have a hard time staying up where you want them to go. You just have to keep working with them. Before we're through it'll lay down. And you can, you can, you can come over here and you can also add some gloss medium to where you're going next with papers. I'm going to use some of this rice paper. It adds some very unique textures that I, don't, I wouldn't know how to get any other way. Now at this point, I don't like to worry too much about composition. In other words, I'm not, I'm not giving a lot of thought to where I'm laying these, these pieces of paper. All, everything's going to get painted over in layers. That doesn't mean you won't, it won't be painted over, some of it will be painted over completely where you, it, it'll be obliterated. That's during the editing process, but right now, we're just getting started, we're just, we're just obliterating that horrible white canvas. <laughs> Every time I see a white canvas, I want to paint it. I want to put some paint on it.
put in a few dark elements to get things going. This will this will start developing the value the value composition that uh, ultimately will make up the painting. When you have a strong composition, you have a strong painting. That one doesn't want to stick too well, but that's okay. And this one doesn't want to tear too well, but that's okay. The thing I like about these tissue papers is when they fold over on top of themselves, they create these wonderful lines and like they're like cracks and crevices so if you don't get any other papers make sure you get some of these and these are available at at all your hobby you can buy them at art supply stores but they might be cheaper at hobby places like Michaels or Hobby Lobby is what I was thinking of you can order them online too I'll give you a list of resources some other time. So. And you want to Trying to work fast. <laughs> now this is good. This is a very messy process. Like I said before, I want wrinkles. I don't I don't want I don't want these to be smooth. So when they wrinkle up like that, that's great. That's what I want. Which is lucky because uh, they tend to do that on their own. I've seen people use brayers and rollers to try to get the paper smooth. You can do that if you like. But that's not that's not my style. Now I have some construction paper here. And we can go ahead and start adding some compositional elements by using the design principle of repetition. I've always heard repetition strengthens and confirms. When when I when I utilize repetition in my paintings, which is almost all my paintings, I like to mix it up. In other words, I don't like if I was making circles on this canvas, I wouldn't use one size circle. None of the circles would be the same size. And as a matter of fact, I wouldn't replicate the same size circles. I think I mean, that's one way to do it. That could add harmony, too. Uh, it's just not my style. I like to add variation at the same time that I'm utilizing repetition. So instead of just using the same length here, I make this one shorter. And now we've also used the principle of variety or variation.
you've probably heard by now that there's a rule of not using, don't, don't, if you're using repetition and you should, uh, don't, don't do two birds or two, uh, circles, do three. An odd number is more interesting for whatever reason. I guess it adds a little bit of tension, which is another design principle. So as you see, we're just, we're just covering this canvas. And it will take a while because it's a pretty big canvas. If we were working smaller, it would go a lot faster. Maybe I should have thought of that. <laughs> I know you guys are... You guys are ready to see some some results. I am too. I get anxious myself. So, yes, I'm not giving too much thought. And you can you can bring. We're probably going to uh, paint the sides of this canvas, so don't uh, don't hesitate to bring the uh, collage pieces over the sides over and just glue them down there too sometimes I like to turn the canvas around that gives me a new perspective at this stage it's it can't hurt alright here's, here's something I kinda like this Always grab more papers than you think you're going to use. Three or four times as many. All right. We're getting there. <laughs> it may take a while, but we'll get there. We will get there. Painting is so much fun. I don't I can't think of anything I'd rather be doing. I wasn't able to get into my studio for a few days. And I went almost crazy. So now I'm back. Where to put this? See, now I start thinking. Now I start thinking, where to put this? Put it right here. One common bad habit that a lot of artists have, including myself, when I don't watch it, is to end up putting, putting everything in the middle whether we realize it or not. And then we stand back and we go, well, there's nothing on the, on the edges. So I like to start off, even though maybe I haven't quite achieved that yet, but uh, by, by placing elements and textures and focal, focal points, if you will, around the edges. I can always take them out as I need to. I can always edit it and remove them. But that, that just gives me a better starting position. All right. Um, boom. So speaking of which, I'll just bring this over here. And you notice I'm letting some of the... I'm, as I'm collaging, I'm collaging over pieces okay so Well, 
trying to get it straight for you. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Here's a nice looking piece. The thing about these, these old discarded paintings uh, is that a lot of times they just have a tremendous amount of texture and abstract composition within them, within the pieces that they were putting up here. So that gives you plenty to start with, plenty of information. Every painting goes through several phases, several uh, stages, I should say. Every painting goes through several stages. Of course, there's the beginning, and the middle, and the end. <laughs> but the point is that, that knowing in advance that you're going to be taking elements out and adding other elements, gives you an advantage. You're not you're not trying to make it beautiful or or anything from the start. So you know just stop trying to paint pretty paintings. You can make them pretty after after you get them going. Okay. See, I didn't bring as many papers as I wish I had. I just, I, I didn't stop to think how large the canvas was. Now, we're not going to cover this entire thing. As a matter of fact, we're almost through with this. Just a few more pieces. Okay, I have to step back myself so I can see the whole canvas. Well, that's a decent start. I think I want to add a, just maybe some, a little bit up there. Ah, this is interesting. Yeah, this is an interesting piece of paper. See, this is actually uh, copy paper. This, well, I don't know where I got this. It looks like a Xerox copy. I might have done some colored pencil work on this. Well, it'll be another element. It's a mixed media, so we can we can put whatever we want to in here. That just breaks up that corner a little bit. Okay. Okay, I think that's it for the for the collage elements for now. We'll be back in just a moment.